All right, so before we begin, I need to make something very clear. When I first saw Torment, I immediately thought of Baldur's Gate. I mean, this must be the third installment or something like that. But it's not, because Baldur's Gate is set in the Forgotten Realms from Dungeons & Dragons, using that system's mechanics for the video game. See, I learned things. Torment is based off Numenera from Monty Cook Games and has a completely different rule set. I should have known this because of the subtitle, but I didn't. So, quick recap, Baldur's Gate is D&D. Torment is Numenera. Torment is not Baldur's Gate 3. I mostly say that for myself. Now, I need you to understand this when I show you the first scene in the game. Damn, this looks so much like Baldur's Gate. Okay, keep it together, Nathan. Since you can choose between male and female characters, I went with what it says on my new passport and chose female. Thanks, State Department. Anyway, moving on. The first thing you'll probably notice after the graphic and interface similarities to that other game is that your character building is very different. Numenera uses three stat pools, Might, Speed, and Intellect. Now, I said stat pools because unlike stats in some other games, the primary use of these is to apply effort to situations you encounter in and out of conflict, or crises in this case. So, I have an intellect of 7 at the start here, but I can spend those points to increase my odds and damage on an intellect challenge. Think of your stats as a kind of currency, or maybe mana, because they regenerate when you rest or use items, or whatever works. Anyway, also handy is that you are apparently some kind of demigod with amazing powers, except when I can't choose any options and have to restart my game. Okay, let's just whip through this again. Alright, back, and, uh, yeah, take that sorrow. Work that time. All right, good. Moving on. You have some NPCs following you that have some cool skills, like this one lady that exists in multiple dimensions. I think I gave her a little hamster, so I guess that's trans-dimensional now, I guess. I also found a place where you can get questionable augmentation surgeries, and I picked out these retractable claws that made me look like X-23 from Logan. Oh, such a good movie. Anyway, there's lots you can do if you can figure out where you're going. Can anyone tell me where to find the sorrow? The sorrow? It's a tentacle thing that, like, lives in my memories, I guess. And I, I only learn about it when I die. Oh yeah, one of the things you do a lot is die. I dare say you've managed to find a way to die in almost every reality. But it's cool because you can just go back to the plane where the game started, which is apparently in your mind, until you decide to return to the corporeal world. So, that's a cool trick. The biggest problem with Torment Tides of Numenera is that it reminded me of the big problems I had with classic RPGs like, yeah, you know. While there's a lot of stories and side quests, figuring out what you need to do or where you need to go is half the game. Even looking through my notes didn't really help. Maybe classic RPGs weren't as good as I remember them. Maybe I've been spoiled by modern RPGs with waypoints and fast travel and a snappy GUI that pops up every time I do something. But asking every single character where I can find the one person that's supposed to be around here somewhere you keep telling me that she is, is just not engaging. It feels like the game is tormenting me. Oh, that's why it's called that. Clever. Hello, I know you don't have a head, but could you give me directions? I take it that's a no. 